<laughs> I, thought I, I thought I was interviewed by a computer. Joining us uh, is Micah Curry, Associate Director at Fidelity Worldwide Investments. We'll look through some of those uh, stories in a bit more detail. Good morning to you. Good morning. Thanks morning, Micah. for being with us. Uh, let's begin with Greece, as ever. Yes. The continuing saga. I mean, it does feel like the end game, doesn't it? At least for it, this round it, of negotiations. It does feel like the final deadline. So we've had deadline after deadline, which transpired to be more of a guideline. But this Saturday really is the break point. Um, this needs to be pushed through the Greek Parliament if a, an agreement is met. And then, obviously, it needs to go through Berlin. Otherwise, come Tuesday, we'll be in trouble. Is there time for that, though? Seriously, yeah, exactly. with I mean, what it's, we've seen it's in... It's two working... Well, one working day. Well, it's tomorrow. One working day. And, and, and what... And again, I was talking to Johnny Bloom, our correspondent in Athens, who was down there all this week. Um, what is it that these finance ministers are looking over tomorrow? Because... There's no new proposal. I mean, there, there is. There was one from earlier this week, but that's already been rejected by the lenders. So I don't. What What are the eurozone the, finance the, ministers the, looking at? The two key, key issues remain pension reforms yep. and VAT. So those mm. are the two sticking points. Now, if we do end up in a situation where there is a default, um, then. The, the, the positive bit is that the Eurozone is in a much more robust position than it was back in 2011 when we saw the first Greek crisis. Mm. Uh, the EU members are a lot more prepared, but as, as we read in the paper, there will be a human cost. Well, there already has been one. Mm. And can I just say this? Mm. Even if a deal is reached, there are many out there saying that, let's say a deal's reached, okay, so they get this next chunk, the last mm. chunk of this bailout number two, right? Mm -hmm. 7.2 billion euros. Okay, they get that. They pay the IMF, or IMF off for, for now, etc. But within days, they'll probably need another bailout, a, a full bailout package. That's what's being suggested. They, they, can't, just, they can't just run the country on this 7.2 billion euros that they're going to get if they get it, no. right? It's, a, it's an ongoing saga, but there's a cost to be paid on both sides if Greek, Greece exits the Eurozone. Mm. Hence the plan B, although I wonder whether sort of talking now about a plan B is a kind of way of upping the ante a bit, saying, look, you know, we're ready for you to, to default, been, you know, might put a bit of pressure on the It's Greek been a government. bit of a poker game. Yeah. On, the front, on that front page, where is it? I can't even tell. Bill Gates, is, yeah. uh, just by coincidence, is next to the Greek story. I'm, I'm kind of thinking, Bill Gates, come in, buy up Greece, problem solved. You're going to make that you're call. You're going to make that call. You're going to make that call. I'll make that call. Okay. Okay. Bill, got good a deal luck, for good you. Good luck with that. Yeah, okay. Uh, Paris. In fact, two stories that are linked, but let's begin with this rather dramatic picture on the front page of Le Figaro. Uh, a car upturned, protesters going around any car that they believe is part of the Uber taxi service, uh, vandalising it and, and tipping it up. I mean, it's they don't staggering. do things by halves in France, do they? No, they don't. It's quite staggering. I mean, we've seen these issues with Uber in very various cities across the world. Mm. We've seen it in London with the black cab drivers. But this is taking it to the next level. I mean, resorting to violence, antagonizing people is really not the answer. That's not the way you're going to get people to use your services. No. And, and Uber really has. It, it's one of these online services that has, uh, and, and Airbnb is the other story in mm. France. We'll talk about that in particular in Paris, I believe it is, in a minute. But Uber's really shaken things up, hasn't it, in that it sense? Is, but is the, it is technology. Technology yeah. is changing every business, yeah. not just the uh, taxi industry. This Airbnb, you've heard yeah. this before, haven't you? It's been rumbling on. Yeah. In, in Paris, for yeah. example. Uh, what, the, the worry is, I guess, the... Well, Go partly on. that I think the, the, the businesses are using it. I mean, Airbnb should be for, 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 for people, individuals to use mm. if they're not there or they want to rent out their, their apartment. Yeah. It seems to be becoming big business with people buying mm. up large numbers of par apartments mm. and then renting them out and then but forcing residents out because yeah. obviously prices are... Prices are going up, uh, which I guess is not in the spirit of the website. But, no, I, I think mean, I, I, you know, it's hard to know it's how so, they it's, it's balancing it. tourism and balancing housing. So you don't want your inner cities turning into ghost towns. And I, I think that is the issue. And it's very much about regulation and technology and finding a way of managing the sharing economy. And, and interesting on that point, because the editorial in the figure, my French isn't perfect, but I mean, the, the headline of the editorial is tsunami, I a tsunami of technology mm -hmm. and saying, if we don't find ways to regulate, as you say, uh, this, this new, uh, brave new world will become a jungle. Mm -hmm. I mean, this, which is, you know, quite, quite strong language, isn't it? It is strong language, but I'm sure you've heard the quote that um, the biggest taxi company 
which is Uber, owns no taxis. The biggest media company, yep. Facebook, owns no content. The biggest accommodation com company, Airbnb, owns no property. Yep. This shows us how the world is changing. It sure is. It sure is. Let's talk about this in the International New York Times, because it's kind of been Obamacare, I'm talking about. It's kind of been off the, well, certainly the, the global media radar for, for a bit. So where, one another, another, um, the, the country's highest court, so mm -hmm. one another round there, if, if, if you will. But where, where, where are we at with Obamacare in the United States? Well, this is the second time, as, as we heard earlier, in mm -hmm. three years that it's been to the Supreme Court. But it looks like Obamacare is going to go ahead, which is a massive victory for the president. And it's also a victory for Hillary Clinton, because as you'll remember, she was one of the early architects of this plan. The idea is to use tax subsidies to give every American healthcare, mm. which if you think about it, this is the world's biggest economy. It's a bit of a no-brainer. Mm. It's been an aspiration of every democratic uh, U.S. president since Harry Truman. Um, and I think it's going to happen, finally. Despite the fact that, yeah, I mean, every Democratic uh, politician or president, but every Republican, uh, certainly mm. a great number. I mean, this is what led to the Supreme Court mm -hmm. judgment. I mean, many states with Republican governors saying, we're not going to participate. I mean, they've tried every tactic, haven't they? They have haven't tried they? every tactic, and a lot of unhappy Republicans out there. And, again, this could very well still stay in place if Republicans... Get get in next yeah. round if you if you will for president. I think now the Supreme yeah. Court's uh, given its okay. judgment, and yeah. as, it, as it says, you know the the, the follow-up article. This is about President Obama's legacy. Absolutely, you know, yeah. now yeah. trying yeah. to shore up. Yes, his and he, he enters his last five hundred days as the president. So this is a core element of his legacy. Seems like a long time, doesn't it? But you're right. This is what happens. People start thinking about how they're going to be remembered, even though they've got a year and a half yeah, to yeah, go. Yeah, yeah, true. An algorithm. Yeah, have you ever been interviewed by a computer? Uh, thankfully, no. Thankfully, no. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of this? Because link, LinkedIn is really make, coming in leaps and bounds in terms of mm -hmm. getting rid of the, the middleman, the, the um, someone recruitment told, Someone agency. told me yesterday that they'd been offered a job this week on LinkedIn yeah, yeah, without, yeah, even, sure. without even asking. No. We were looking mm. for a job or, or approaching. I do think this is one area where technology might go one step too far because there is an element of intuition, chemistry. You've got to speak to a person before you hire them. And isn't there the old adage that you know that you know we make up our humans we just it, it's instinct we make up our minds or in in 20 seconds 15 seconds 30 seconds kind of thing well that's the argument this article makes is that we have our biases yeah. and we have our preferences and we can sort of by using an algorithm we can cut those out but I don't know if that's the solution because obviously from the interviewees point too you need to see if you want to work for this person or this company if the culture I works I think we're all dinosaurs I think we are that's we? a brave new world thank you very much Micah thank Thanks you for Micah. Stuff. Good, that's it for our look at the news today. Have a good day. Bye-bye.